pizza. When it's got to be good and it's got to be now, it's got to be, got to be Domino's. Welcome back to our studios here in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Mike Ditka and Joe Gibbs. The New York Jets with a 10-point lead at halftime over the Miami Dolphins. Take a look at the numbers for Dan Marino and Boomer Esiason because they are the focal points in this game so far. Marino at 50%. Boomer 14 of 22 for 172 yards and a touchdown. Joe, is this surprising you today? Well, I think the season for the Jets really goes as Boomer goes, they go. He gets hurt earlier in the season, they go to nothing. As he's come back and got stronger, they've picked up. Today, everybody talks about his arm strength and everything. He's matched up against Marino. He's averaging about eight yards per attempt. But, of course, the key in this game is I think both teams are going to move the ball. It's the turnovers, and Miami's turned the ball over. But I think Boomer's playing an excellent ball game. Certainly turnovers killing the Miami Dolphins, but they really haven't been very sharp inside the red zone lately. Well, they haven't, but the reason the turnovers are killing, you've got to give the Jets defense some credit. You know, they played very well the last couple of weeks. They're starting to get the ball back. I mean, the plays that they turned the ball over on were good plays, interceptions, and a good fumble recovery. The Miami Dolphins held on to that football less than 10 minutes in the first half. The Jets lead it by a score of 10 to nothing. Meanwhile, in Cleveland, the Browns leading the Houston Oilers by a score of 17 to 10 in the second quarter. There is Mark Rippon, who is back to the role of backup quarterback. Vinny Testaverde got the start. He's picked off in the end zone here by Daryl Lewis. That's the 12th interception that Vinny has thrown this season. Cleveland led 3-0 in the second quarter when Testaverde off the play action had all kinds of time. And a wide open receiver, Frank Hartley. 10-0 Browns. Oilers didn't get a first down until this one in the second quarter. And it capped by Lorenzo White's one-yard touchdown run. It is a 10-7. It was a 10-7 lead at that point. It's 17-10 now in favor of Cleveland. Vinny Testaverde has almost been picked a couple of times in this first half, but he still has his team on top. I was going to say, Greg, I think the dangerous thing here is he's throwing two more balls that could have been picked. This team needs a quarterback that doesn't make mistakes. And I think that Testaverde this year has shown that he is... Uh, he will throw interceptions, and I think that the better choice then, I think, I would lean towards Ripon. Of course, I'm partial. Partial, yeah. And meanwhile, you like the way Lorenzo White runs the football. Well, I like the way White runs the football, but I also like what Jeff Fisher's doing. Dick Corey's the offensive coordinator there, and he's doing an outstanding job. They've gone back to an old-fashioned type of football, of running the football leads, Lorenzo White throwing the passes. They're trying to keep... Uh, a, a offense on the field that doesn't turn the football over. They'll be good enough on defense. Jeff Fisher will do a good job with that football team. All right, guys, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons. The Eagles have just gotten on the board in Atlanta. That game is tied at 7 in the second quarter. And in Minnesota, what is into the Tampa Bay Bucks today? They lead the Vikings by a score of 14-6 to six in the second. Up next, Jim Gray's visit with the Raiders, Anthony Smith, after this message from your local station.